VORs are hard. You may not use them much, but if you're an instrument pilot, you might expect your examiner to have you fly some VOR procedures, and if you're already an IFR pilot, you may have to demonstrate them on an IPC or need to use them in case of a GPS problem. We've done a number of videos on VORs on Flight Insight, giving you tips on how they work and how to fly them, but there's really no substitute for practice in the airplane or sim. Here's an exercise I found somewhere on the internet a few years back that I've used with some students. I wish I could give credit to the creator, but can't recall where I first saw this. I'll call it the VOR flower. It's kind of a warm-up drill for getting comfortable with VORs. Here's how it works. Let's say we're approaching the VOR on Nantucket from the northwest. We're going to start by overflying the station and then turning right to a south heading. We're going to fly out to the south and then get turned around to track northbound into the station again. That'll look like this. This is what a typical procedure turn looks like on an approach plate. Let's get some headings on here. First, we fly out south along the 180 radial. Then we start a course reversal by making a 45 degree left turn heading 135. Then a 180 around to the right heading 315. This heading will get us an intercept to track inbound again to the station heading 360. This is turn number one, so we've labeled it as such. Now, over the station again, we'll make a 45 degree turn to the left and begin turn two, which looks like this. We head out first along the 315 radial, then make a course reversal to the right and track inbound heading 135. This is turn two. After every turn, when we're over the station again, we make a 45 degree left turn and begin the next procedure. Odd numbered turns will be to the left, while even numbered turns will be to the right until we get through all eight turns. There's many variations you can do with this, like making all right turns or all left turns. Now, on each heading change we make, we should run through a memory aid called the five T's. Turn, time, twist, throttle, talk. First, we make a turn. Then we start a timer. We'll do one minute legs. Then we twist the OBS setting on the VOR head if necessary. We adjust the throttle if necessary to desired speed. And we talk by communicating our intentions. The last two T's, throttle and talk, won't be necessary in this drill, but it helps to say them anyways. If this seems complicated, it kind of is. We'll fly it in a sec, but just to review, let's say we're completing turn three here, back inbound to the station. We'll make a 45 degree turn to the left and begin turn four. That's how the sequence will go. So we'll start northwest of Nantucket. First, we want to tune to the station. We'll set the frequency into our nav one, 116.2, flip it active, and listen to the Morse identifier. We're using the Garmin 530, so we'll also need to set VLOC mode on the receiver. Now let's twist the OBS until the needle centers with a two indication. This shows that we'll want a course of 150 degrees to fly inbound, so we'll maintain that heading. As we fly inbound, have that VOR flower diagram we drew handy, because we're really gonna tax our situational awareness skills in a moment. As we get closer, let's focus just on three instruments, the clock, the heading indicator, and the VOR receiver. The needle on the VOR receiver is starting to swing out. When we get station passage, we're gonna begin turn one, which starts with a 180 heading. There's station passage, let's do the five T's. Turn, right heading 180. Time, we'll start the timer on the clock. We'll be on this leg for one minute. Twist, we're gonna twist the OBS to 180, and we'll just say the throttle and talk in the five T's for consistency. The needle is slowly starting to come in as we get further away from the station. We'll be flying this radial for one minute. Take a look at our diagram. Our next turn will be to the left. At the end of the one minute, we'll begin our five T's again. Turn, left to 135. Time, the timer is ticking up the next minute for this leg already. Twist, let's anticipate the next thing we need the VOR for to track inbound to the station on 360, so we'll twist to 360. Throttle, talk. At the end of our one minute, we'll do the five T's. Turn, 180 degrees around to the right, heading 315. Time, we don't need the timer anymore, so let's reset it to zero for later. Twist, we've already set our VOR for the inbound course. Throttle, talk. Once on the 315 heading, we hold this until the needle swings to center and then track that inbound. When the needle gets close, we turn again to 360. We don't need the other four T's here. 
When we pass over the station, we'll have completed turn one. Turn two begins with a left turn to 315, so we'll get ready for that. At station passage, let's turn left to 315. Time starts ticking up to one minute. Twist the OBS to 315, throttle, talk. We want to track the 315 radial outbound for one minute. Our next turn will be right to 360. So this is how we'll continue for the rest of the eight turns. Definitely keep your diagram handy for this. Always think of what the next turn needs to be. Try to do everything the same way every time, such as when to reset the timer, and definitely say the five T's every time you turn. You're bound to at least once have to ask yourself where you are and what you're doing next. And this is a great habit to get into as an instrument pilot. If you can get used to that feeling that you might not be doing the right thing, it'll make you better at self-correcting or spotting errors before they happen. So not only is this a great VOR drill, but also a great habit forming exercise for instrument flying in general. The whole thing should take about 45 minutes, so try it in the sim or grab a safety pilot and give it a shot and let us know how it goes. Here's the track log from this flight.